Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at what is known as an exponential function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Basic Exponential Function. As the name implies, exponential functions are based on the idea of exponents. So therefore, it makes sense that the most basic exponential function has the following format. y equals to c exponent x. This function is quite different from many other functions that you may have seen because this time the independent variable denoted by x is located in the exponent position. In many other functions you're used to seeing the variable x in this position of the base. So in this type of function where the x is located in the exponent position the c represents a constant which will remain fixed at a particular value depending on the question will be serving as the base of an exponential function. In addition to this base being fixed at a constant value for any given function there's an additional two constraints that go along with this base. The two constraints are the following. The base must always be larger than zero and can never equal to one. Now the big question is why must the base be bigger than zero? In other words, it can never be negative. Well, the main reason is the following. The base can never be negative because it will create a very unpredictable graph which has absolutely no application purposes. The second big question is why can the base never equal to zero? Well, for this, it's a very easy explanation. It's because if the base was zero, then zero exponent anything will always be zero, thereby creating a linear function, which essentially defeats the purpose of exponential functions. And finally, in the same manner, the base can never equal to one because, again, one exponent anything simply equals one and thereby creates another linear function which again defeats the purpose of an exponential function. So if you think about this very carefully it essentially only leaves two possible scenarios for what the base can be. The base can either be any values that go from 0 to 1 excluding both the 0 and the 1 or the base can be any value larger than 1. And surprisingly, both of these scenarios create very different graphs. In your notebook, I would like you to split your page in half because we're going to look at both of these scenarios. Let's first investigate what the graph will look like if the base were larger than 1. So for argument's sake, let's pick a completely random base in order to investigate what will happen if the base was larger than 1. For simplicity, I'm just going to stick with a base of 2. So suppose that I want to analyze how the graph looks like for the function y equals 2 exponent x. As with any other function, let's investigate what the graph will look like by first building a table of values. So I would like you to take a moment to prepare the following table of values. With your table of values ready to go, Let's figure out what y will equal to for certain given values of x. So if x was negative 3, if you check on your calculator, 2 exponent negative 3 gives you a value of 0 0.125. Next, when x is negative 2, 2 exponent negative 2 gives you a value of 0 0.25. Next, 2 exponent negative 1 gives you a value of 0 0.5. Next, 2 exponent 0 gives you a 1. Remember, anything exponent 0 will always give you 1. Next, 2 exponent 1 gives you 2. 2 exponent 2 gives you 4. And 2 exponent 3 gives you 8. There's an additional note that needs to be attached to this table of values. If you think about it carefully, there's one value that y can never become. And that value is 0. The reason is simple. There is no value of x 
that you can plug into the exponent so that 2 exponent that value gives you 0. That's simply impossible. And if you know your graphing techniques, you might realize that this will create an asymptote. And now we are ready to sketch the graph to see what it will look like. In order to comment the graph nicely, you'll need to prepare a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid. All right, with the grid ready to go, let's sketch the graph. So when x is negative 3, y is 0.125. So that's very, very small, maybe right about there. Next, when x is minus 2, y is 0.25. So that's about a quarter, maybe right about there. Next, when x is minus 1, y is half. Easy enough. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. And finally, when x is 3, y is 8. And, using your semi-artistic skills, connecting all the coordinates should produce a graph that looks like the following. And notice the asymptote located at y equals to 0. So as you can see, an exponential function where the base is larger than 1 creates a graph that starts out very slow, but then starts growing very, very quickly. Think of this like people getting sick. You start with one person getting sick, who then in turn starts infecting two people, and then those two people who are sick infect another two people each, and you can see quickly how things can get out of control. Now, let's go back to the second scenario of allowing the base to be less than 1, but bigger than 0. So again, let's analyze how this graph looks like by picking a completely random base that matches those constraints. For simplicity, I'll be setting the base to a value of a half. So our function will be y equals a half exponent x. Again, let's analyze what this graph will look like by first creating a table of values. So take a moment to prepare a table with the following x values. All right, let's see what kind of y values we'll get. So if you use your calculator, you'll find that a half exponent negative 3 gives you 8. A half exponent negative 2 gives you 4. A half exponent negative 1 gives you 2. A half exponent 0 gives you 1. Again, remember, anything exponent 0 will always equal to 1. A half exponent 1 is just a half. A half exponent 2 is 0.25. And finally, a half exponent 3 gives you 0.125. Very interesting results. Just as before, an extra note needs to be attached to this table of values. If you think carefully about it, there's no value of x that you can plug into the function to cause half exponent anything to give you an answer of 0. So the note that we need to attach is that y, again, can never reach 0. And graphically, again, this will produce an asymptote at y equals 0. In order to accommodate this graph decently, we'll need a grid that's the exact same size as the previous example. So, go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. Alright, with your grid ready to go, let's put down all our coordinates. So when x is negative 3, y is 8. Right about there. Next, when x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is negative 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is half. When x is 2, y is 0.25. And finally, when x is 3, y is 0.125. 
As you can see, it approaches the x-axis but will never touch it. So therefore, it causes an asymptote of y equals to zero. And again, using your semi-artistic skills, you should be able to produce a curve that looks about like that. And it's a very interesting behavior that contrasts with the previous example. This curve decreases very quickly and then it drops off towards the end. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is what is known as a basic exponential function divided into two cases, one where the base is larger than 1, and the second one where the base is between 0 and 1.